which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You all make sure you turn on your mics just a couple times at the end. Thank you. Okay, approval of the agenda for today. Mr. Chair, um, I would like to move to amend the agenda and postpone items 15 and 16. Um, I believe this is moving much too quickly. These two items, there is the appearance of too many behind the scene meetings, too many um, decisions already made. I do want to discuss the ideas. I would suggest, and I do have a motion at the end of the board meeting, um, to set a date, time, and place for strategic planning with an outside facilitator to deal with this issue. Um, and we'll see where it goes. What is a strategic facilitator? That would be on my, I, we would have to select one. Um, actually, I, I already wrote up the, I could pass it out. This is information only? This is information only, but I'll be making uh, a motion at the end for next week's agenda if indeed, even if however we proceed for today. Basically, I, I guess I think there's uh, many ways to move our county forward and increase, okay. Just as, waiting for a second. Yes, it, you've made a motion and that's to right. uh, approve the agenda, but postponing so items 15, 15 and 16. Yep. I have a motion on the floor, need a second? A second for discussion. Basically, I'll go back. There's many ways to move our county forward, increase efficiencies. Um, I appreciate Supervisor Taylor bringing the, um, an issue that really has been kicked around on and off for several years, um, as long as I've been on the board. And obviously, uh, you know, there have been administrators before we were ever here, so it, it's not a, necessarily a new idea. But I do think the manner in which um, we're going about it could be improved. And I think in the spirit of open communication and open process, good government, that we, I've been advocating for this. I think we need to go into strategic planning. And I think it would be helpful with the way our board has um, functioned this year that we would consider an outside facilitator. So that's my reason not to not have the discussion just to move it to a different format. Anyone else? Mr. Gill, roll call. Smith? Aye. Taylor? Nay. Clausen? Aye. Hung? Nay. Monson? Nay. Need a motion to approve the agenda for today? Move approval of the agenda dated March 17, 2015. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. I believe you have, uh, I don't know what Mr. Cross has said. I said aye. Four aye, one nay. Thank Pro you. Approval of the minutes March 10th, last week. Move approval of the minutes dated March 10th, 2015. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Human resources, Mr. Gilliland. Uh, approval of the claims. Oh, excuse me. I moved too fast. Discussion and approval of claims, any discussion? Need a motion? Move the approval of the claims. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Human resources. We just have uh, 
approval of tra basic transactions, uh, including uh, some deputies that are being uh, added to reserves. And uh, need a motion to approve. So okay. moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Authorize the chairman to sign authorization to initiate hiring process. Need a motion. I'll move it. Need a second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, need approval. Um, from Mr. Brown to apply for a MERD grant, which came up last week. And uh, Joshua, you want to discuss this? Well, the uh, prior time that the board dealt with the issue, the motion failed for lack of a quorum. Um, I think that there's been some clarification uh, provided to the supervisors related to uh, the vote on this issue uh, from outside counsel. So I think we're at a place where um, the board could entertain a motion, and if if there's uh, three members that are able to vote on it, then the action can be taken. As I understood it, it's called ministerial. It's not really a substantive action. Um, that's my understanding of the reasoning, yes. Okay. Need a motion to approve the MERD grant request from Mr. Brown? So moved. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Uh, need approval for the auditing firm used by MERD for their audit. That would be Hinges, Connors, and Williams. Need a motion? This also is ministerial. So moved. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All okay. those in favor say aye. The motion should specify who the auditor is. Pardon me? Did the motion specify who it is? Yes. Yes. Okay. The chairman mentioned it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, Board of Administration Public Bidder, Karen Jane's approval resolution for tax suspension for MW. Uh, need a motion? <coughs> so moved. Uh, second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Approval of resolution for notice of property sale parcel 365370. Need a motion. Uh, Move to set the public hearing March 31st at 442 p.m. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Need approval of resolution for notice of property sale parcel 128595. Need a motion. As soon as I catch up. Did I go in the right order? Um, well, it looks like that one's March 31st at 4.40. There we go. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, next item, Social Services, Teresa, authorization for chairman to sign application for targeted case management accreditation. I think you need to be cre accredited, huh? I feel we do. <laughs> <coughs> 
Need a motion to approve <coughs> Chairman's signature? I move the Chairman sign the application for the targeted case management accreditation. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. County Sheriff, Dave Drew, approval to send and uh, advertise the jail kiosk commissary RFP. Dave Drew, Sheriff, uh, we need your approval to uh, send out and advertise for the jail kiosk. And uh, what that will do for us is um, we'll put a kiosk in each of the 10, 14 uh, areas of the jail and uh, we'll have our PREA information on there, we'll have our rules and regulations on there. Uh, they can also have an assortment of uh, commissary items that they can have that will actually bring in some uh, dollars for uh, the jail, for the county as a whole. Um, it will also free up us having to do all the delivery of these things, take that information. One of the things I like probably most out of the whole kiosk is grievances can be filed on the kiosk machine and there's a timestamp and a date that will allow us to know when that, and it just protects us. Um, and it helps the, our attorneys that represent us in future incidents that take place. And uh, I think that's probably one of the largest benefits, um, more so than candy and chips and all the other things. But uh, that is important. And also then they can buy items such as uh, their T-shirts, their long johns, and all those things off that. So it, it's a benefit for us. So it's money that we'd actually take in instead of us having to deal with that and tie up our personnel it will it will take care of those matters as a whole mr stallman put together a rather extensive rfp well with the help i mean i give him credit but josh <laughs> I, i'll tell pj uh, josh is the man that uh, spends a lot of time research but greg does a great job too but uh, that's a that's a good effort by both of them need a motion I would move approval to send out and advertise the jail kiosk commissary RFP. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Now, you'll bring those RFPs back and we'll open them here? Right. Excellent. Yep. yep. How many companies are there out there? Lots or some? Oh. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay, next up for bid. County attorney and um, County Sheriff, consideration and approval of to participate with the Sioux City City in uh, to submit the Edward J. Bryan Memorial Justice Program. Uh, I'd also like to count, Mark has been helpful on the RFP to put any legal notice. Mark Nauer helped me with that, so I just want to make it known to you both. All right, here we go. Sure. I have to show. Yeah. <laughs> This is basically just an uh, agreement between all of the law enforcement entities here in Woodbury County, Sioux City Police Department, Sheriff's Department, and this is just for the prosecution of drugs mainly. So it pays for some law enforcement officers as well as our drug prosecutor upstairs. Did it go down again this year? We don't know yet. No? It has in the past, but I assume that it keeps on dwindling, but uh, we'll take what we can get, right? We will. Uh, need a motion to approve applying? I'd move it, Make a, need a second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All righty. That was too easy. Yeah, that was great. Mr. Nara. <coughs> I 
Mark Nara, Woodbury County Engineer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Got to get used to saying that instead of good morning. Um, I think we need to go down to item B to start. Okay. Because we have a set time for the culvert letting. Right. Uh, the first item is the approval of a federal aid agreement for a bridge project. This is on County Road K49 north of Lawton over Elliott Creek. Uh, this is a federal aid participation agreement that secures the 80% uh, federal aid funding for replacement of the uh, <coughs> bridge in section 21. Recommend approval. Need a motion? I'll move it. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, these require the signature of both the uh, board chair and the auditor. And the location for that signature is marked. Bring it when we get the other one. Uh, the uh, next one we have is a similar agreement. Uh, this is for the uh, um, bridge. This would be between um, the Bronson blacktop and the road that runs east out of Sergeant Bluff. So this is that little short span slab bridge that we've had to post in the last couple of years. Uh, that lays there over Whiskey Creek on County Road D25. Right. Uh, that one is scheduled for replacement, and uh, this is a federal aid agreement again, 80% funding. Uh, estimated cost is $600,000. Wow. Need a motion? Come on, this is for Whiskey Creek. Move I'll move it. I'll second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Sure, you that both do need to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next item we have on the agenda is a uh, permit to work in the right of way for Richard Patterson. Uh, he's proposing to do ditch cleaning on the west side of Charles Avenue um, for uh, drainage way maintenance. Um, our road, our Drainage, our ditches alongside the road are basically built to drain the roadway. We do have farmers that uh, do desire to get their water out of their fields and down to the uh, laterals in the farmer's ditch area. Uh, typically, they apply for a permit to work in the right of way. We go down and stake that so that we're sure that these ditches aren't overdug. Uh, we've had problems with that that uh, I know the longer term members of the board have experienced where uh, some of these ditches were done under the supervision of the drainage district, but not under the supervision of the road department. So um, we've been working with the district to try and make sure that we do not have uh, the issues we've had in the past with road collapses because of those ditches and four slopes being undermined uh, alongside of our road. Um, with that information in place, uh, this is the first permit of this type of the year. I recommend approval. Need a motion? Move approval, Mr. Chair. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. Uh, next, we have an application for uh, uh, use of the right of way for an underground tile line for Larry Edler. Um, I think it's uh, Lundgren Tile is going to be doing the work. Uh, they, they do a lot of this work for our farmers out there in the rural area. Lundell Construction, I'm sorry, of Cherokee. Um, again, this is, uh, the county is required to provide an outlet for drainage tile where a uh, natural outlet can't be found. Um, that would be part of what this project involves is we will be uh, paying for the tile from fence to fence. It's the farmer's job to connect up to that on both ends. But I recommend approval. Need a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. We're still a little ahead of our time, but uh, we have one more item, and that would be uh, approval of uh, transfer of funds to Iowa Department of Transportation. Uh, the county has a long-term contract with the Iowa DOT to provide materials inspection on our projects. Uh, this is for, um, for SDP number 117 project. Uh, this was uh, Portland Cement Concrete Paving. 
Uh, this is the project on um, the blacktop to Danbury coming west out of Danbury to the intersection with County Road. I think it's uh, L27. Um, there are uh, lab tests that we're not equipped to provide. Uh, they also do the provolometer runs for us. So um, this is uh, very important services that the DOT provides to the county at uh, basically at their cost. Need a motion. I'll move it. Need a second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, I've been out on uh, CF roads. They're doing a great job. <coughs> Get the thaw out. We are starting to see some impacts of spring uh, right between Christensen's and Jolins. There's a there's a spot that's getting a little rough. Um, we've got a couple <coughs> spots on 225th that are starting to get eaten up right now as well. Um, our major route uh, that we constructed last year is is performing very well for a brand new road grade on uh, Andrew and 240th so far. That is nice. A uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of washboard in a couple of places, but uh, by and large, uh, new roads don't perform that well. But uh, you know, we did put a significant investment into the. Uh, uh, geo grid and uh, macadam based stone and gravel. There, there aren't a lot of roads we have 13 inches of aggregate on top of either. So it is doing what we had hoped for. Um, to try and keep it uh, in as good a shape as we can, we are getting out there with our motor grader daily to get that smoothed up after they come into the plant in the morning and then hopefully it's a smooth ride going out uh, at night. Uh, if we can get another couple of weeks of uh, good weather like we've had so far um, and get that frost out of the road, uh, then we can deal with some of the roughness issues. Um, I did uh, provide some information for their last neighborhood meeting. Um, just as last spring, we'll take a little bit of roughness on that road as long as it is solid. And uh, right now it is staying uh, uh, solid up on top for the most part but we do have those couple areas where frost is coming through. And we'll, we'll continue to work on them and make sure we can get those, uh, I think it's 1,720 employees per day that are currently coming into there. I think they were talking about doing a second shift coming up in April or May, so uh, even more pressure on that road. Yes. It's hot and heavy out there. How about the rest of them? Are they holding up? Um, we do have some issues over in the... Uh, uh, Buchanan 180th, 190th area. Um, uh, the large cattle operation is beginning to haul their manure and uh, they're tearing roads where they go. So um, we are trying to get daily attention out to those and uh, uh, repair them just as quickly as we can. Uh, this last couple of weeks has allowed the uh, blade men to start getting some of their spring blading work done, trying to reestablish their edges and and uh, uh, trying to start getting the road shaped up. I'm a little worried we got another snow left. I hate to say that yes, we do. letter word, but uh, you know I, why? I don't think winter's completely done. We have because we drained our snow blower uh. at home, so I know there's another <laughs> snow coming. Now I, now I know who to blame. <laughs> you're going to blame, my, yeah, blame me. Uh, yeah, I hope everybody appreciates the nice week I brought back from Florida. But, uh, but, uh, that was good enough to come along with us. So. We're still at seven minutes till five. All right, um, let's get Mr. Palello up here. Did I see him? Good late afternoon. Uh, I've got a copy of an ordinance we're dealing with in this particular issue. You hold a public hearing and approve the second reading of, uh, excuse me, the first reading of a zoning ordinance mapping change uh, regarding uh, the property that uh, Eric Henning was before you some weeks ago regarding the expansion of his business known as Holly's Products on the intersection of Eastland Avenue and 210th Street. This uh, location is approximately one half mile south and east of the town of Bronson. Um, public hearing was held by the Zoning Commission. Um, 
both their recommendation and your staff recommendation supports the change of the zoning district designation from ag preservation to uh, general commercial. Be happy to entertain any questions. Well, this would be the first reading or the first one, two, and three readings? This is the first of three readings. We will ask you to vote approval of the ordinance on January 31st. Excuse me, March 31st. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we uh, are in hearing. We are. Okay, anyone wish to speak to an ordinance change? Hearing none would close the hearing. Will the hearing be closed? Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. And then I'd ask you now vote to approve the, uh, the reading. First reading? Yes. Need a motion for the first reading. I would move the first reading of zoning ordinance mapping amendments um, reference from item 13 on the agenda. Need a second? Second. Discussion? This doesn't have to be signed, does it? No, it's just uh, we drafted the ordinance, thought you'd like to have a copy. Okay. We'll present that the next two times also. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank you. Thank you. That was even too quick. I guess I do have one thing to share quickly. Um, the uh, Bronson Bridge project will be starting up again shortly. Uh, we're anticipating the week of the 23rd of March that the road will be closed for ba base preparation for paving. If you recall, last year we opened it up with a temporary gravel surface. Um, the contractor will be closing that road and starting that project within the next two weeks. They were so happy when you opened that back up. Well, uh, every, yeah. A lot of people are happy, including us. It's uh, it's one of our major snow routes, so yeah. uh, that's something we don't want to run around with our trucks either in the winter. But uh, um, probably a three to four week duration on the closure. And while it's closed, we'll also be doing the patch on 210th Street where we had to do the pavement removal for the culvert replacement. It was one of our emergency repair projects from uh, Federal Highway Administration. So. We're going to try and get both of those done while the detour is in place. How about D38? That's on D38. You're, I'm talking east, farther east. Right, but I'm where all the Warshot was. Um, we have the first six of those projects on D38 done. Whoa. Uh, we are waiting for our SHPO, State Historic Preservation Office, and NEPA, National Environmental Protection Act, clearances to do the next round of projects on D38. So we have one on K64, I think three on D54, and then several yet remaining on County Road D38, both east and west of the uh, uh, Moville Blacktop. And uh, we're, we're finishing our final plans so that we can send those off for those federal clearances before they can be left. At this point in time, I'm hoping we might have results back to where we could have a late May letting on those projects. It's about as fast as we can move them around. But yep. if you notice, we did put some permanent traffic control in place. We have object markers out there trying to delineate and keep people shying away from them. We still have some of our uh, uh, yield signs in place trying to uh, direct traffic around those areas. Are we close enough? We're close enough. Item A, receive and consider bids for supplying uh, corrugated metal pipe culverts for 2015. Uh, bid tabulations have been turned to, returned to the board. We, uh, we did publish uh, public notice on this. We had sent it out directly to five suppliers. We received two responses. <coughs> the uh, first one I'll open today is from Metal Culverts Incorporated of Jefferson City, Missouri. Uh, we did have to send out one addendum on the project and this one includes the uh, allowance for that addendum. I'll uh, read off the total bid. Uh, what I'll be requesting is that uh, the board accepts the bids and then remands them to our office for analysis. Uh, the total bid from Metal Culverts Incorporated is $73,300.76. 
76. This includes both our, our uh, stockpile pipe. We keep pipe on place for driveways and for crossroad applications, uh, plus some special pipe projects that we'll be looking to do this spring. The uh, second quotation is from Contact Engineered Solutions of Ankeny, Iowa. Their total bid is $70,987.33, 7097.33. That concludes the uh, bids received today. That's it? That's it. Do you uh, want to take these back and lock them over? That's what I would request, please. Okay. Need a motion to... Uh, Turn the bids back to the county engineer for uh, consideration and recommendation. I would move that we remand the, the bids back to the county engineer for his review. Need a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay. We'll be back with an award recommendation next week. Excellent. Pat's got the other ones. Building services. Doing good. I was just trying to make. <coughs> Sign that one. Here. Can you sort them out and get my signature? <laughs> Send that down to Josh. I'm here on first issue to address the update on the elevator situation. We contacted the main company out of Denver, Iowa and we are going on 30-day uh, agreements. So, which means if we would go out for bid and get a different company, we'd have no problem switching over. It takes us 30 days to get out of the contract, and that is it. So what you're referring to, just so everyone's clear, and I'm clear, we're referring to the elevator service contract. Yes. So we do not have we an We're not tied into an annual, no. Okay. Just not, I just wanted to make the board aware. Uh, I had asked building services if there was a contract. The last one was signed by Mr. Clausen in 1997. Um, since that time, we've paid over $419,000 uh, to Schumacher right. out of Denver, Iowa, with no contract but for a monthly, monthly. approval of claims, essentially. Um, so we really don't have a contract past the month to month. Is that correct? No, actually, we do month to month. Right, outside of a month to month, we could end. Oh that. no, we don't. No. Okay, so we could end that contract next month. Exactly. Okay. Um, now Dennis says that we have enough money in the leftover for CIP that we could do one of those elevators. Um, so you'd be interested I, it, to go it out takes, for what, bid. takes, what, nine months to get the stuff well, here? Well, not necessarily. It all depends on which elevator company we're dealing with and what availability they have, uh, would have on that particular motor and hoistway that we would need. Some of them can get them in three months, some six, and some nine months. All depends on uh, who we choose. But you'd have to go out for bid, wouldn't you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. There's four major contractors in the area we go out for bid for, for sure, we would. I uh, had about 125 people in here last Friday for a tour. Yeah. And we went to the eighth floor. It took about 30 to 40 minutes to get them up there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty slow. <laughs> <laughs> Which was fine, they were okay with that, but. Yeah. Uh, Just, Mr. Chair, could I make a couple of comments? Sure. One of my concerns and one of the reasons that I asked about the the service contract that we have is that my feeling is if we if we are paying for essentially what's brand new and I understand that's not the the car or the carriage itself but it would but be the, the mechanical system, yeah the right mechanical, mechanical yep. that we ought not be at the same exact level on the service contract you know that there should be something involved with that whether it's on the, the warranty side or at least for the suspension of one year of that service contract 
or the service contract thereafter ought to reflect um, whatever warranties are involved in that. So my recommendation to the board is if this is the pleasure of the board, that in the RFP process, part of the RFP process, and I don't know if this would need to be done separately from this, but it's to go out on an RFP also for the service contract. Because essentially we've, we've utilized the same company for the last 17 years without having the approval of this board. So we've, we've expanded. Well, I actually kind of did have the approval. They're the ones that stuck with us on the freight elevator. Mm -hmm. We invited about six or seven companies, even out of town companies. They all turned away but Schumacher and Schumacher said we do it for you at cost. So we kind of had the approval of the board to stick with Schumacher, we did. Doesn't this uh, agreement cover three elevators in this building, uh, two in the law enforcement, two in the Trasper Hoyt and one out at Prairie Hills? Four elevators in this building. We have these three. Oh, that's right. You in the freight elevator, that's four. Five, six in the law Enf enforcement center, seven, eight at Trosper Hoyt, and we also are not carrying a full service contract out to Prairie Hills, we're not. But we just have so that I'm, company. With well, but just so I'm clear, there was no signing of a contract. No, there wasn't. Past. No, there wasn't, but I was given the authority to stay with Schumacher, and that's why we were with them. Okay. We, and that would we be never got any bids when we went out no. to bid. Schumacher was the only. That was the only bid yeah. we had. It might still be. Would, wouldn't that be a part of the RFP? I mean, and that's what I'm recommending. Over the last, and the reason I asked the auditor's office for the, um, the amount of dispersals to Schumacher is that that increase has, it, we've had an increase over the years. And so I was looking to see, well, who approved, you know, other than going out in the RFP process or having any sort of signed contract since 97, who's approved that? Um, and I just want to make sure that, you know, as good stewards of taxpayer dollars that we're, we're opening up the RFP process, including the service. Contract. As the elevators age, the price goes up and up because of uh, <laughs> no availability for parts. A lot of your parts have to be machined if they can be machined. We're at the point where we can't even get parts for these anymore. And, and I completely understand why the costs would go up, but I also want to make sure that in the spirit of public bidding, and in making sure that everybody is able to come um, in a formalized process that we're doing, doing yeah, so. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So is it the consensus of this board that we move forward with an RFP for one elevator? It would be that, as DIP? well as a service contract. As well as a service contract. Okay, so you and Josh need to get together and put together an RFP. Okay. Bring Alrighty. it back. Does that work? Sure. Okay. We got one other item on the agenda. Yep. And that's uh, permission to go out and buy a, a, a mower. Uh, we've been to four different companies and got their uh, government pricing on these mowers. They're basically close to the same dimension. They're all diesel motors. Uh, John Deere might be just a, a, a little bigger but that's the uh, closest they had in comparison with the others, so. So I got a half an hour lecture on the finer points of lawnmowers. Oh yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. one are you recommending? Uh, I would go with uh, the Grasshopper, that is actually the cheapest from Ace Engine in Sioux City, Iowa. <coughs> is it the same one as in number one? Pardon me? Yep. Number one and two the same, oh boy. Yeah. Same one, so you can see that uh, Ace is much cheaper. Yeah. It's not a heavier deck with uh, Same mower. identical mower, same it's thing, same. yeah. Okay. Need a motion to approve the purchase of the Ace engine grasshopper? So moved. <coughs> Need a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Yes, sir. How much was the total? 9,980. We're going to pay part of it out of public bidder that we have left over to see what we're going to be doing, and the other part out of in revenue. That's what we talked about. Yeah, that works for me if it works for everybody else. <coughs> well, in the budget, where was it programmed out of? It actually wasn't programmed in there. This, this is a. Was 
Yeah, after. Which is quite a bit. Huh? That's quite a bit. So there's money there, and then supplement it with gaming revenue for fixed costs. And, and also, along with that, I would uh, like to come back with the board and permission to buy a trailer to haul this. We have a great big trailer we haul our bobcat with, but it's way too huge to load this uh, this grasshopper mower up in. But we'll be back to see if we can get a trailer out of this. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, number 15, proposal for creation of a county administrator. Mr. Taylor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm excited about the proposal that you may have before you. I think it's a great day because we have an opportunity to do something that has been talked about for some time, but maybe um, proposed a little bit differently today, and that's as we have talked about increased transparency, accessibility, and open good government. Um, one of the questions that I've had early on is uh, who helps to manage at the board's behest uh, the day-to-day -day functions, especially when it comes to our department heads and enacting the very policies that this board helps to, to create and the vision that we help to um, establish. You've seen some different things on the, the board from the new time to the um, handicapped accessibility to a recognition of excellent customer service and excellent community service and a budget process that was um, different than, than years past. And many of these different situations, especially in working and interfacing with department heads, um, we have asked our human resources director to provide um, some of the uh, accountability that we have looked at and some of the implementation um, of such accountability. And so what I'd like to propose before you is that you look at um, a little bit of a PowerPoint that I put together. And in this, I talk about the, the current statutory uh, functions. I'm not sure, Heather, I might just point to you and, and then it can roll through. How's that sound? And if it's not on the screen, then I'll just talk it. So the, the basic idea behind this premise is that um, the function of the Board of Supervisors is primarily administrative in nature, and we also um, exercise power characteristic of the three branches of, of government. But in that, on a day-to-day -day management basis, um, we are looking, or I am proposing, that we have a, an administrator who would act not only as our human resources director, but also um, what in Scott County is an assistant county administrator. I want to say this up front, nothing in this plan will mitigate the power or cede the power or authority of the board in order to conduct its elected duties and functions. In fact, I believe to a greater degree um, and with more efficiency and fidelity, uh, our, our policies can be carried out. And so that is what I am uh, proposing. And in that proposal, what I would like to uh, put forward is that there's a balance between the strong manager style that you'll hear about, for example, in Scott County, where they have a, a county manager who's paid upwards of $175,000 and really acts as the, the key focal person in economic development, interfacing with the chamber, and really being the face of county government. That is not what I am advocating here with a strong county manager style. I think that there's a balance, a hybrid, so to speak, between such strong manager style and the traditional board, wherein this position um, would be overseeing department heads to carry out the goals and vision and policy of the board, working um, in department head meetings, setting goals with those department heads. In going to ISAC and talking to other counties, uh, one of the, the roles that I've seen out there that most closely mirrors this is in Scott County. They have an assistant county administrator and director of HR, which is this sort of hybrid position. And, and in that, uh, acts as not only chief negotiator in collective bargaining, but also supervises. One of the questions I had very early on is, I understand who supervises our employees. Who supervises 
and helps lead and marshal our department heads. And I understand that the board is the ultimate authority, but on a day-to-day -day operational basis, I think that this can be a key asset, increase customer service, and really champion some of the goals that we have as a board. In speaking with Scott County's uh, budget analyst, I learned that the county administrator um, implements the goals of the board, acts as keeper of board policy, meets weekly with all department heads, distills issues and briefing back to the board, works in coordination with the budget analyst to develop and implement boards, the board's budget guidelines. One thing I'm very interested is in performance-based budgeting. What are those targets and metrics by which each department head can show um, that they need a budget that's commensurate with meeting such targets? And I envision a, uh, in this proposal that this position would work very closely with the budget analyst and with those department heads in setting uh, those very goals. I would not, and I want to reiterate this, um, put this forward as someone who would be um, tasked with economic development activities interfacing with the, the cha chamber or other governmental entities. That would not be what this position is doing. We already have an economic development director. Uh, we have a board, a board chair, and we work closely with the initiative and other business leaders. In order to fairly compensate um, such an individual, uh, my proposal would be that we take an individual who at this point I think has demonstrated that he has those very characteristics um, to work well in a spirit of cooperation with department heads, has the respect of department heads and I believe the board. In fact, one of the things I'd like to compliment the past board on is this was not a hire of anybody who's new to the board. Uh, Ed Gilliland, your um, human resources director, currently is making a compensation of $79,000. I would uh, put forward in this proposal that he makes $98,000, which would be closer in line with the compensation of a county administrator salary. And I believe that we can do something that's unique, um, that we can take that out of our salaries. I believe that the board um, can put forward a proposal whereby they say, this will be neutral to taxpayers. In fact, we're willing to lead with a, a little bit of a sacrifice. And so to have effective leadership in the county, um, these are parts of the, the proposal that I would lay before you. And I'd also say this, training uh, is something that I believe Mr. Gilliland is very good at and would be a critical part of the job. That would include the performance-based budgeting training. I know that Supervisor Ung talked about um, earlier on when he was running the long-term facility planning, evaluation, training, mentorship, um, things like culture and climate uh, training, including customer service training, and, and so on. So that is what I would um, put before the board, and I'm excited about uh, the possibilities. I believe that uh, we may be sixth in population, but, but we can rank in the bottom quarter as far as supervisor salaries, but do this in a way that actually empowers this board to a greater degree. And so my motion will be that the, the board adopt a resolution to have a working committee of two members <coughs> who in coordination with the assistant county attorney, citizen input, and the broad organizational goals that have been laid out in this presentation uh, bring back to the board no later than April 7th a specific job description of the county administrator or H slash HR director position, and that upon further implementation that supervisor salaries be lowered in the amounts mentioned in the presentation so as to make this increase in effective good government budget neutral for Woodbury County Sachs Fane families. Those are my introductory remarks. And I would go on to uh, discuss the uh, advisory panel that has been put together. Um, Ron Peterson from the Sioux City Journal has agreed to participate. Jim Johnson from the Tax Research Conference has agreed to participate. And Preston DeBoer, who is the union representative for about a quarter of our employees in the county, has agreed to participate. Uh, their discussions with me were that they would like to talk to a lot of people, and specifically all five supervisors, uh, and maybe other department heads, to get a broad perspective of what's going on. Uh, I think they take this very seriously and are very interested in the concept. Um, it's wide open as far as I'm concerned. Um, 
I don't know that we have any control over any of the three. Uh, they may make a recommendation, uh, whether it be verbal or in writing, or just send us a message. We never really uh, nailed that down, but um, I, I think it's a great opportunity to get community input. I'm just uh, trying to clarify, did you make a motion today? Yeah. Yes, you did. Well, this is it's not, not an, action. an action item. item. Well, it's a motion to, co to continue what we're doing. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Well, can we settle that issue first, whether there is a motion on the floor? There's yes, there's a motion on the floor. Uh, well, does it have to, is it for information or is it an action item? Because on the agenda, it's for information only. It's for motion for further discussion for this committee. So there's nothing that's going to change the makeup of, of county government except to continue as working committee that will come back within a month's time with a recommendation. Well, need a second. We'll, we'll handle that later, I guess. Need a second. Well, I'd like to, Josh, do you mind, can we have an action? Can we have a motion if it's just an information item? I mean, I feel like it's moving too quickly and we haven't even had a time to really talk about it or digest it or. All right, if we're gonna have a formal uh, committee that would provide a recommendation to the board, uh, that should be an action item listed on the agenda, uh, which is not today. However, if there was a consensus of the board to go forward as far as contacting those individuals and setting that up so that it's in place. For instance, if the board were to take the formal action next week, then that would be appropriate. <coughs> okay, so do we have consensus that we move forward? You want a roll call consensus? <laughs> well, it's consensus That's not in order. 100% or what, 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 how are you defining con consensus? Uh, three to two or? Yeah, it'd be a majority of the board. I'm for moving ahead. Second that. Well, I'm not. There is, uh, once again, you know, I, I think you've moved too fast. I think you've bypassed the expertise on this board of even talking about it with all of us together. There is not one woman on that board. There's no rural representation on the board. You have picked three people that I, I think it's too homogeneous. Uh, the two, um, no disrespect, but the two supervisors are not experienced. Um, you know, it would have been nice to see one experience. I'm not, I don't even want, really want to be on it, but I would. But I think there should be one experienced supervisor maybe even Supervisor Clausen, he's worked with an uh, administrator before. So I think um, I'm not, I don't agree. Mr. Clausen? Uh, once again, there's no, you say, you use the word we. Who is we? In what sentence? I forgot already, Mr. Clausen. It's been a Through the whole thing, you said we. Put this together. Is that you and Mark? No, I, did I, part I, of I don't it. think I, I said when I said we put this PowerPoint together, I don't think I made that statement, Mr. Clausen. Not the PowerPoint, okay. all of the ideas in here. I put this together. This is yours and yours alone. Yes, sir. You've got eight weeks of experience on the board and you've come up with this type of proposal? You know, Mr. Clausen, you'll echo Ms. Uh, Ms. Smith, that two of the supervisors are somehow not willing to or not capable of putting forward proposals. No, I absolutely, no Jeremy, I'm not I, saying I that, so don't turn it that way. I, it's not I'm, not, I'm not, sir, but what I am saying is, yes, I put this together, and I'll tell you how, and I'll go through each slide. I took this off of the Woodbury County Board of Supervisors. It's not hard to put this sort of material together. I went to ISAC. I sought out the Scott County uh, board, I how, sat out their many, budget. How many boards have a county manager? 
for county administration. I think less than 10 is my understanding. How about two or less? I think it's two. Polk and Scott. Uh, anyway, it's, it's just, uh, I can't believe what's going on with this board. There is no transparency. Oh, come on, Larry. Uh, so your consensus I, now, is no? I let Jeremy have his say. All right, you go right ahead. You, I will. Uh, you don't talk to anybody, unless it's Mark. You've never sought my counsel. I don't know if you saw it Jackie's or not. I don't know if you saw it Matthew's. But to bring something like this forward without talking to anybody, that's just nuts. The people you have on board, you and Matthew, and you have to give me the fact that you know there's no experience there. Uh, two of the other three have advocated for a county manager for years. Why you wouldn't make a commission made up of people that are uh, not biased in one way or the other, I have no idea. And yourself and Matthew both advocated when you ran for office for a county administrator. Correct me if I'm wrong. I no, not. I just wonder if you're suggesting that we have somebody on the committee who's against the idea of a county manager in the first place. Is that why not? Well, why I think it'd be have pretty open discussions and differences of opinion. That doesn't happen on this board. It used to, but it hasn't since January. <laughs> Things have uh, gone swimmingly before that. Yes, it is. This, the morale in this courthouse is lower than it's ever been. No, I don't buy that at all. I don't you buy that at all. Talk to your department heads and you will have a very- I do. I, no, you don't. Can uh, I just say something basic? Yeah, go ahead, prior, because this, no, I, this me, thing is obscene. On prior experience. <laughs> and it's, once again, it's not a laughing matter, Mark. Yes, it this is. It affects all the taxpayers right. in Woodbury County. Jackie? It kind of reminds me of the old, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but it reminds me of what I went through on the security. I brought a plan, I investigated, I took a lot of criticism to be quite honest that I had done something behind the scenes. So what happens, and you know, quite honest, I do believe you did that all on your own because you can pull all that information. You know, I found where you got the information so I know you can do it. Um, but what happens is when it's sprung on, then everyone doesn't have the opportunity to digest it you know, I think we're a pretty diverse board. And I feel like we've handed the decision over to another group of citizens that I certainly want citizen input, but I would like us to utilize our department heads and for us to ha honestly to go in and, and have a facilitator and talk about our challenges, why we might need an administrator, why we might wanna go with HR, my, we might want to go out and hire a whole new position. We might not want to hire a position. We may want to consider ourselves full time. I just think there's so many different ways to go forward. And I honestly think we can do it and we were elected to do this problem solving. So I think you've moved too quickly. Um, I guess I, I think I was elected to do this work and I want to do it. I don't. I want to do it. Matthew. I don't get the whole moving too fast charge against Supervisor Taylor. No matter what we think of the plan, we're all adults. We can all agree that he didn't plagiarize this presentation. Oh, I, I'm not plagiarize. Uh, no, well, I didn't say that. I just meant we no, I wasn't talking talk. about you okay. or what you said. You, you gave him credit and he thanked you and, and that was all very unnecessary because of course he did it. This was on the agenda, naturally, at the normal schedule. We all saw it days ahead of time. It's an information item. That is as transparent as you can get in the progression of this discussion. What about the people that are supposedly appointed to this board? What about the salary? I don't know, Larry. I was not addressing that. I was addressing the progression of this discussion is perfectly reasonable. Can I just say one thing? The thing that you don't do, the reason that people get upset about the violation of Iowa 
open meetings, open records laws, is when they feel like all the discussion has been had. I come forward with pages of material and I have a proposal. The fact that we're talking about it and I'm asking, can you have a, uh, a committee over the next four weeks that is open for public input and that brings simply a recommendation back to this board and the board can say, we want to talk about it for three or four more weeks is all I am doing. So the idea that somehow I should have gone to one supervisor and then to another and that we should have had all this behind closed doors instead of bringing forward a proposal of 14 pages that clearly states people may not like the salary. They might not like the fact that we, that my proposal is that we take a little bit less. I get that. I get the theory that it is uh, when you touch anybody's pocketbook. I get that. But all it is is a proposal. Now if we all had talked and worked this out beforehand, then there would be some real heartburn. But it wouldn't be on this board, it should be out in that room to say, wait a second. You know, and I'll just say this, conflict isn't fun, but I respect each person up here. But one of the messy things in government is when you have conflict because you haven't worked out everything. Clearly I haven't worked this whole thing out with the board prior to. You're I, making my point for me. That is what I want to do is go and work this out in a retreat type situation where we can actually function <coughs> as I think good government should because I don't think we are. You know, I have a whole host of things here that I think I could rip it apart if I want to. I don't really want to do that. I want to do it in a very systematic, thoughtful way that makes our county move forward and makes it serve our citizens. And I guess I just disagree with the process. I don't think it should have all done be, been done before now. I think it going forward, it should be us dealing with it. And I guess I don't care if we want to have a simultaneous committee. You know, I, I can be convinced of that, but I don't want to not have the opportunity to sit down with a facilitator and figure out our strengths and our challenges and what we do well and what we don't do well. And out of that, I think we will have a vision of what we want to be, how we can serve our citizens, and what maybe an administrator would look like if we need one or if we don't. I don't know why you're fighting me on this issue because I've been bringing it up since January. Mr. I don't Gil. understand it. I just... Uh... Pat Gill, County Auditor. I want to talk a little bit about the, the transparency because I'm having a hard time uh, keeping up with this conversation. Uh, Supervisor Smith talked about the being criticized because of the security plan. And I was one of them that did that. And I took heat uh, from both sides about that. But what I see the difference is, is that, and I guess I don't want to rehash it either, but I see the difference is, is that when that security plan, what I, when I voiced my concern when I said this is not transparent, was that security plan came, there was nothing in the homework. There was, uh, there was discussion about a security plan. I'd had conversations with Mr. Butler about it, and. During that period of time, right before that came up, uh, I asked Mr. Butler about it, and we're rehashing that, but I did, and he said he wasn't at liberty to talk to me about that. And so then the plan was put forward on that Tuesday morning. There was nothing in the, the backup, and there was a plan to take it from the sheriff's office and give it to human resources, and that's when I said this is not transparent. And, that, and I don't want to go back no, and No, no, but I'm, t I'm talking about the difference here, Supervisor Smith is that what I see happening here, and people are concerned, Supervisor Kloss and I have discussed this over and over about transparency. For years we've talked about it. And we disagree. Is that true, Mr. Kloss? We disagree on a lot of things. <laughs> yes. But deal. on the transparency issue is that when you say that uh, you should be talking among yourselves, I don't agree with that before you bring something forward. It's in the homework and you're discussing it, and, and uh, 
I agree with what the ruling was as far as trying to make a motion when it doesn't say it's an action item at this point. But the information was all included in there. And to say he can't bring that forward, I disagree. That's what is supposed to take place, is that you're supposed to have open and honest discussion in front of the public about this. That's, you know, I think that's good. And the discussion that you're having right now is very good. That's what it, you're talking about the process and whether it should be, you know, you're talking about trying to get a consensus. Mr. T Supervisor Taylor has brought forth uh, something that he would like to dis uh, discuss and move forward on. And you're discussing that, well, maybe we should, uh, we should proceed forward with that discussion. But we should do it in a different manner, and that's okay. But uh, what concerns me is when you say things. I just read the editorial in the journal this morning about it's sunshine is when accusations are thrown about uh, that it's not transparent. I think that's a disservice to the board and to the citizens of Woodbury County. Is that, it, you know, every, every one of you should be able to bring forth an issue to be discussed openly. That's, you know, that's the way the process works. I don't fault that at all. It's when you have what they uh, term as a walking quorum, and I don't know if that was some of the accusations that was being made, but when you go back and talk uh, among yourselves before you bring something forward, I don't think that's the way it should be done. I think that the, and I'm speaking because I believe that's part of my duty as far as uh, thinking things that are transparent and bringing it to your attention. And that's, you know, that's, that's where I fall. I don't think that anybody should be criticized for bringing something forward to talk about among yourselves, and it's an idea. There's nothing that, uh, there was nothing secret about. It was all put in the homework. I read it. I had several questions asked of me during that process uh, of, you know, of what, uh, you know, could be done, and, and we had those discussions. I had them with you. Uh, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Bring that forward and discussing that. I think that's transparent. Well, maybe I should reframe it. It feels disrespectful, but maybe transparent's the wrong word. Maybe transparent's the wrong word. Is he on your payroll or what? <laughs> but I do think we should consider having a retreat. I wish you would <coughs> really look at that so we can further digest this. We and our department heads. I think we should rely on them. They are here day to day. I think they can guide us, actually. We should lis listen to them. Going forward with this decision, we know better than anyone else, I really believe on what county government can be and should be. And I, and I think we have a varied opinion. <coughs> I don't think we have group think by any means. And I think we're a diverse group to tackle this issue. And I think the county will be better for it. I, I believe it 150% that to turn it over and just come back for a quick decision in four weeks will shortchange our citizens. And I guess I'm, I'm repeating myself, so I'm done. Do we have consensus to move forward with the committee? Matthew? I would be willing to serve on the committee or on the panel but I would also say that I have concerns about the plan. I intend to bring back to the board another information item regarding thoughts I have and information I've received from county supervisors across Iowa, including Scott County. I've already I've been in the process of calling and gathering information. I want to bring back a firsthand account of what we're talking about here. See, that would be, I guess I'm going to repeat myself again, that would be nice to come back and share with all of us and not going to an outside committee. I would like to hear that. I think we're going to do both. Because you do learn a lot when you talk to your peers at those ISAC committees. You do. You get a whole different perspective and it's really very nice. Well, ISAC is where this idea started, so yes. And I don't think there's anything that prohibits any other board member, nor do I want you to think, and I really mean this, that 
that input isn't just as valuable. I mean, if I said, I think we need to make a time certain decision next week, I mean, part of the reason for working in four weeks of meetings is to be able to do that. So if there are ideas, um, I think it will only make it better. Um, so. Well, I already know how this is, since the committee has already decided to serve, I'm pretty sure I know how this is gonna go. I would hope that when it comes back that this board will consider not just a slam dunk of what that is and that we will take that information and our own expertise and our own opinions and go into a retreat um, and digest the information and, and be deliberate about it and um, use our own judgment and trust ourselves. Okay, moving along. Anyone have committee reports? I Citizen? do. Okay. Sorry. Uh, health and wellness. Can I bring up, sorry, we do have item 16 on the agenda. Oh. Joshua, do you have a comment on that? Um, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> PJ? Can you come up, please? PJ Jennings, County Attorney. I did share my initial thoughts on whether it's allowable under the code with Mr. Taylor, and, and just my initial um, perusal of, of the code would say that it's not allowed. Um, and that's only because the wording has a mandate in there that it shall be done, this particular issue shall be done 30 days prior to the certification of the, the budget, which has already been done. And so he posed an additional question to me, and so that's what our office will be looking in further to just clarify that a little bit more. Very good. So. Thank you very much. Okay, committee reports. So Mr. Chair and the rest of the supervisors, uh, attended health and wellness, if I have the, the name correctly today, and just talked about the, the number of claims that we, we currently have and how the wellness program is impacting that and seems to be doing so positively. Um, they talked about uh, the, the trends we have at this point, and, and Ed or Gloria can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this information, $4.5 million in this fiscal year that have been paid out. And our wellness program is designed to mitigate some of those costs um, including biometric screenings, blue zone um, applications, a wellness program. Uh, we have a 60% rate, if that's correct. Uh, participation. participation, which is about double of what uh, many other organizations have, which is very, very good. Uh, one thing I'd like to um, suggest and maybe talk about for the next agenda um, is the fact that there are uh, non-invasive and painless tests and we can get all three screenings for uh, roughly $99 um, that would um, help. And I don't know if, Ed, do you want to just give us a one minute on what yeah, those the, would be like? The tests that we looked at are tests that uh, help evaluate your cardiovascular function. Uh, it's things like, it's like your carotid, do I need a duck? <laughs> carotid arteries, um, aneurysms, um, another <coughs> heart function and uh, aneurysms especially are a very tough thing to uh, diagnose so being able to have that testing I think could be extremely helpful if you look at the, the results we've had in the past with our wellness program uh, we've had we found some people that were in very dire situations uh, physically and uh, have saved the county just a ton of money by being, being putting those in place by getting them by intervening and getting them involved with their doctors so these are like the aortic um, aneurysm, the ultrasound to, to try to detect some of those early on so that you don't, the county and these families don't have that cost later on, both in terms of being out and sickness. Absolutely. And uh, if you look at it from a person perspective or from a people perspective, it's great for the families and the employee. Uh, if you look at it from a financial perspective, it's a win-win uh, because you do save the county money, but you save the families a lot of money too. So one of the things that we talked about just as a possibility is these normally cost about $99.
the county would be offered this and county employees and their spouses at $50. And I talked about what if we pulled those who are at a higher age risk, 40 and over, um, and maybe looked at what the cost would be to bring it down to $25 so those individuals still had skin in the game. Um, but we would probably save a lot of money if we even had one early detection. Um, so just an idea that we could put on the agenda for next week. Sure, very good. Yeah, I think it would be a great thing to do. I think it'd be a lot of help. Okay. Um. I, I went to a leader, a women's leadership conference today at the convention center. There were 400 women, uh, 200 female students. What do you, were you did you say you were at that? Yeah, I was there. The board chairman said they had 150 students. Is that what it was? And over 400, 400 attendees. Yeah. At, at, it was a good turnout. Uh, there were three national uh, women speakers. Were you there all morning? I'm going to no. say a fact, and I hope no, I, I get it right. The first part of it, and then I had to okay. add other interviews. Um, there, what did they say? I thought I'll just pass this along. They said uh, women, uh, before they will believe something is true, need like 80 percent of the facts to go with it. Men require 20 percent to believe something's true. So I just pass that on. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, went to ISAC in Des Moines last week and uh, attended di different sessions on uh, workman's comp, discipline in the workplace, and an uh, update on the state's finances from the state auditor, Mary Moseman. Uh, the best thing about going to ISAC, as always for me, is talking to other supervisors and getting their firsthand knowledge and experience. Unfortunately, our ISAC dues are going up three hundred dollars. Did you vote in favor of that, Mr. Lynch? I was the only one in the room to vote nay. <laughs> I believe you were so quiet in that vote that no one. Knew it. <laughs> anyway, one other quick yes, and I'll be done. I uh, just want to. I picked on juvenile detention a little bit when we were talking about our numbers the other day, as far as uh, those who had been maybe tardy or, or, or things of that nature. And I think we use them as an example and met with uh, the department head. He had some goals that he had laid out, some needs. And I just wanted to, to report some of the numbers are outstanding. Uh, late zero times, 453 individuals. Late one minute, 13 individuals. So shared numbers on how they're getting to the fidelity of working with uh, HR and the auditor's office. And I think just as clearly as we, we state when things aren't going as well as we want, uh, we need to recognize individuals who are really doing a good job and just wanted to mention that. So. Yeah, they have done a remarkable job in their turnaround. Uh, their uh, employees are complying very well. Uh, I think they should be commended. Thanks for that. I have one announcement, and that is Karen dislocated her ankle last night. Elbow. So she is probably not around for the rest of the week. Ouch. Yeah. Anyone else? All right. Take a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chair. We're out of here. <clears throat>